All right, guys, uh, just a real quick uh, introduction for this one right here. Uh, first off, uh, this website right here, you don't really, really need that one because all this uh, information is from our last set of Corona activities before we went on the spring break. So if you haven't got through the 4.1 through 4.3 uh, set yet with transcription and translation, you definitely want to do that. Um, normally I would have tacked this in, but I think it works as a good review. Make sure we're on the same page. Here's just some general uh, questions you should be able to answer. Um, just stuff about transcription, translation. This one, number nine, we can go ahead and skip that one. If you have an uh, older computer and or Linux and you use Firefox, then you could actually make that weird old flash site work, but uh, you, you've already seen that. Just remember, when we're looking at DNA, the DNA cannot get read right away uh, to make our polypeptide, to make our piece of a protein. And so we've got steps up here that we've got to follow. Um, first things first, got to remember DNA is double-stranded, but only one side of that code actually matters. So step one, determine which side uh, is the side that contains the code, and it tells you right here it's the top strand. Why is it the top strand? Because I said so. The DNA actually has some markers and stuff on here, like some targeting instructions that say, hey, right here, this is the, but you know, that's for AP. Then you're gonna use your base pairing rules. So pretty much this whole part down here, uh, we can just ignore that. And we're just gonna do transcription. Remember, T is gonna pair with an A. A would pair with a U, right? Because there is no uh, T in mRNA. That G is gonna pair with a C. I like to put a little dot below them or a slash through them as I go. You don't want to go crazy and like eliminate it because then you know you you won't be able to like read it anymore if you make a mistake. But you know it just sort of keeps me on the C. I wonder if we get a U. Uh, that C gets a G. It sort of just keeps you on track and make sure that you don't miss anything. So you go through all that and we'll just we'll just keep going a little bit. So we got a, a A and then a U. That'd be a G. Oh, that's familiar. And a C. And then an A. And then, you know, so on and so forth. Next, number three. Very important that you do not skip step three, otherwise bad things will happen. You have to find the start codon. Remember, that's what sets the reading frame. So, we ignore, 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 ignore. And then, we have AUG that sets our reading frame. And, you know, you see the next one, I didn't go far enough. So, C, A, U right bloop blap and you know there'll be more so this is the part that will actually get read by the ribosome when we do translation so then you'll use the the key which would be the the wheel or the chart that we talked about before spring break and you just write out your your uh, polypeptide right down here right so if you're you're using the codon wheel right AUG that gives us a methionine, so we got a met right here. So we just start with our polypeptide first. Will be a met. I like to do a little arrow like that, just you know, make it foolproof. You can just write, you know, the three-letter abbreviations for your amino acids. Next, we have CAU, so CAU. There it is, histidine. Next one should be histidine, and you just, you know, you go on. One of these is a trick. So make sure you don't skip step number three, otherwise um, you're gonna have a bad time on this worksheet. Anyway, that is this worksheet. Should be pretty self-explanatory.